motorcyclist is dead after an overnight crash over in Converse. This happened a little after 1230 at Crestway and Gibbs Sprawl Road. Converse police tell us a motorcycle slammed into a car head on. EMS crews tried to help him, but he died at the scene. Investigators are trying to work out what happened. No one else was hurt. Happening today, the trial continues for Jose Ruiz, who is accused of killing five-year-old Mercedes Lasoya. Yesterday, prosecutors telling the jury Mercedes died from extreme physical abuse and torture that lasted for weeks. Neighbors also spoke describing what they heard months before Mercedes died. A resident that lives below Ruiz told the jury he called 911 multiple times for noise complaints, hearing screaming and crying through the halls. The intensity, um, like the wailing and how severely the, the, uh, the child was crying and the duration was very prolonged. And while she was crying, did you ever hear her say any words with it? Not words, just ow, ow, ow. Jurors will be back today at 10 a.m. We will be live streaming on KSATDOM.com, KSAT Plus, and our YouTube channel. In a call for accountability from the Uvalde Police Department, Brett Cross is continuing his protest today outside the police station there in Uvalde. Brett was the guardian of Uzziah Garcia, one of the kids killed at Robb Elementary School. His protest comes after city council took no action this week following an investigation into the Uvalde Police Department, found no wrongdoing by any local officers who responded to the massacre. On Tuesday, Mayor Cody Smith told families leaders need more time to address the findings. All I know is that I'm going to be here until something changes. Um, they ask for more time. They've had almost two years. How much more time does one need? You know what your officers did. The whole world has seen the body cam of them just sitting there and waiting. What more do you need? Cross says he's ready to stay outside Uvalde PD headquarters even after the next council meeting, March 26th, to ensure officers are held accountable. This is not his first time. He previously sat outside Uvalde School District's administration office for more than 10 days in a call for action against the school district police department. In your morning headlines, the healthcare industry is hobbled after a recent cyber attack against a major healthcare firm. This hack is causing major financial headaches for the industry and comes as senior White House officials are calling on healthcare providers to get essential funds back to the health sector. John Lawrence reports federal investigators are now taking action. The Department of Health and Human Services is going to put change health care on the operating table. The system is fragile to uh, fraud and uh, computer uh, hacking, and that's what happened in this case. Last month, Change Healthcare was hit with what the American Hospital Association calls, quote, the most significant and consequential cyber attack on the U.S. healthcare system in American history. It shows how vulnerable our whole system is and how dependent we are on the Internet anymore. The insurance billing firm is involved in roughly one third of U.S. patient records and the HHS will investigate into whether Change Healthcare properly protected their data in compliance with the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. Meanwhile, if you're looking at a copay discount card, uh, you're probably not going to be able to use that at this point in time until the system uh, is fixed. The hack has disrupted medical payments from insurance companies to health providers over the past few weeks, and that's leaving some clinics strapped for cash. It's very disheartening because we want to deliver the medications to our patients that we serve. A spokesperson for Change Healthcare and its parent company, United Health Group, tells CNN it will cooperate with the HHS investigation. I'm John Lawrence reporting.